Hi, I'm DJ Ware. On this episode of the Cyber Gizmo, I'm going to try to follow up on Alpine Linux a little bit. Uh, every time I've done one of these, uh, the comments have been, will you show us some other mode besides Sys? All right, you win. I'm going to do that. I'm going to cover data mode today. I might, I'll, you know, I'll show you the none, but it's really trivial. I mean, that part, If you once you understand how to do data, the data mode, the sys mode is just trivial. So, but we'll go through that today. Stay tuned right after this. So for those of you that are coming to the channel, I've been trying to do this more and more as, the, as you come into the channel and you're trying to figure out, okay, uh, what is Alpine Linux again? I can't remember. What was it? Um, so <laughs> Alpine Linux, this the version I'm going to be looking at today is 3.13.5. There is a version 3.15, but it's an edge. So it means it's still kind of alpha, beta, I guess somewhere in some edge usually means bugs. So <laughs> I don't think I want to do that one. So we'll look at the latest release, which is 3.13.5. Now I reviewed 3.13 back in January of 2021. This release is current as of April the 14th, so uh, that's pretty recent. So I downloaded the ISO, which is 3.13.5, and uh, we'll go through that. So what is it? Alpine is designed for power users that want, if you just want simplicity and resource efficiency. Um, so it is, I mean, it is not Arch, okay? It's not... <laughs> This isn't like Arch. I mean, Arch Arch is is totally different. It has a lot more packages than Alpine does. Alpine is a server release, so it isn't meant to be your desktop. It's meant to be your server. It uses BusyBox. It uses uh, Musil, and it instead of libc. So it does a lot of things that are different than normal Linux, and it does it in order to compress it and make it as small and tight as possible. Docker, of course, I've talked about this before, uses it as the default Linux image. And you will find um, Docker images out there for Alpine and so forth. So if you want to just put this in a Docker image, you can do that. But it takes as little as 8 megabytes uh, in a container and around 130 megabytes of disk when installed to a conventional hard drive or a virtual machine. Binaries are compiled as position independent. I've talked about that before. That's Pi. Uh, it makes it harder for an attacker to, to locate an application in memory because the application doesn't come up and sit in the same location in memory every time that it loads. It randomizes its position and makes it a lot more difficult to uh, to find. It's sort of like a shell game. Uh, it, I mean, it, is it secure? Yeah, it's secure, but is it the most secure thing you can do? No, of course not. But it's just one more thing in your arsenal that you can use to help protect your servers. Package management is a lot faster than any other package manager in Linux. And they use APK. And they, it's, I've explained this before. The way APK works is it does not download a cache of the install. Instead, whenever you make a, a call to the the uh, whatever you want to install, it actually starts that download right then. <clears throat> so the, it doesn't have to update cache files and all that nonsense that a lot of other ones do. So there, I've explained this before. What are the different modes? Is the diskless mode, so that runs completely out of memory. Uh, any changes to the OS are lost between reboots unless you do an LBU commit between them. So if you want to save your, your things, you, you just make sure to run LBU commit before you restart the system, and that will preserve your changes. And I'll show you that today on the data mode. Data mode runs the OS from memory, but you can create a writable partition. It's usually on the hard drive. It does not put any system files there other than you can tell it to store your configs there. And so that's your persistent store for your configurations when you reboot. Um, yeah, so you can you can store your store that kind of thing there if you like. System mode, now we, we've installed it that way before. That just runs as a standard Linux installation where you have a bootable drive that you, you're bringing up the system with. So, and you can create a USB stick. There is a images to do that. So, 
why don't we take a look on on how we're going to do a disk install a disk just a data install today let's get started i'm going to be installing alpine on proxmox today so let's go ahead and create a vm and i've already got an alpine so i'll create an alpine 2. I'll need to define where my where my where my ISO image is sitting, and in my case, it's on NAS, on my NAS. So, Alpine standard. I, I mean, you can do whatever you want here, but I mean, if you want to use Spice, you can. And if you you know, so I'll go ahead and just leave it default today, and then I'll want to put that. That's going to be my local store. I'm. I'm just going to create one partition, but you, I mean, obviously you can create as many partitions on that as you want, but I only need it for the configs. So I don't need a lot of CPUs. I don't need a lot of memory. And I think that'll do it for the install. So I'll just wait for it to build out here. So one thing you'll notice here is that the boot order is currently set to SCSI, IDE, and NET. So we'll probably... Yeah, the IDE is the CD-ROM. What we're going to want to do is just drag this down for so the, the hard drive is under. It's it's not going to boot from the uh, hard drive. Otherwise, it'll just stop because we're not actually going to put an operating system on the hard drive. Okay, So that's the only change that you have to do for data mode in order to make this work. Well, let's go ahead and start it up. It should start up fine from the uh, from the ISO, unless it makes a liar out of me. No, nope, it didn't. So we're good. So I'll need to sign in here. And the first time you sign in to this, uh, you'll you'll uh, you won't have a password that you need to put in. So the next step I'll need to do is before we get started is. Uh, let's check and see if my hard drive is. Let's try an F disk minus L. We'll do it that way. Yep, there's my drive, and it doesn't have a partition table, so. So let's see. Let's go ahead and put a partition on it. It's a primary, it's number one, and then we'll write it out. We're done with that. And the next step. That we'll need to do here is we'll need to make a file system and I'm, I'm gonna just make a now if you're gonna store configs the way that the Alpine folks describe this is they suggest you use and make DOS file system on it so we'll do that and um, it should be SDA 1 and it's done and then the next thing we'll want to do is we'll want to make a directory. Minus P, which of course will, if it's if media isn't there, it'll create it automatically. All right, so let's make sure that that's there, and it is. And then the next thing we'll need to do, there we go. Okay. Uh, and we can just make sure that it did mount it. And uh, now you can do your setup Alpine. But you need to get that set up first. And and uh, otherwise, you it won't have anything. So I'm just going to default through this. Uh, I'm choosing my host name as local name. And then my, Brit, my Ethernet card and DHCP. Uh, no, I don't need any more, so we'll go ahead and get the IP address. We'll give root a password. And UTC is fine. I don't have a proxy. We'll go ahead and select one for me. Now you're going to see, you're probably going to see an error here because it doesn't have a disk to, to install it with. Don't worry about it. Uh, and then in this case, where do I want to store my configs? Well, SDA1 is where I want it to go. So now I could just type the location in. I could just do this. But we'll do it your way. And then it'll find it. So 
That's it. I'm set up, but I'm not done. I'm not done with this. What I need to do right now is do an LBU commit. Let's spell it right, maybe, huh? There we go. So now what that LBU commit just did was all those changes I just made to to the system, like, uh, you know, setting up my network and all that stuff, it just preserved it. So right now, my operating system is running out of RAM. And the only thing that it does is that I have a persistent store for any configurations that I make. So let's go ahead and reboot this. And you'll notice that it saw that there was a DHCP config for the network, so it set that up. If I type in root, I now have a password prompt. If you forget that LBU commit, it's going to come right back and, and make you do the setup again. So, All right, so I'm good to go here. I can check my IP address. I can go ahead and do an APK update. Now, this will revert back if I don't do another LBU commit. So any changes you make to the system when you're in this mode, you've got to commit it. So otherwise you're going to be in, otherwise you'll be just reverting back to your old system. So I can, uh, I can show you that. So let's go to F, that's the FS tab. And at the bottom here, just to show you what happens. So I'm not going to do the LBU commit. I don't need a sudo. Such habits. I lost my change. So if I, if I, uh, it also, it's all your history's gone too, right? So, so let's try that again. Let's put a comment in. All right, now if I do an LBU commit and I do a reboot, let's see what happens now. If you're going to install packages, um, listen, we can, well, I guess we should try that and see what happens. And this time you'll see my comment is there because I I, I committed the change, uh, yeah, to the system. So that's it. I mean, that, that's that's all there is to this. So what I want to do right now is I'd like to make sure that we have enough memory, obviously. But let's take a look at what we need here. So, uh, yeah, I don't have HTOP. So if you're wondering how to install packages, they install just like they do if you have a sys mode. The only difference is remember to run the LBU commit, otherwise you're going to lose the package and when you're done. So let's take a look and see how much memory this has taken. So 41 meg, 41 and a half meg. Uh, yeah, that's how that's the footprint. That's pretty small, especially in today's world. I mean, that is really tiny. But uh, yeah, I mean, if I rebittered at this point, I would be screwed. I would lose this. So let's go ahead and commit that, and then let's reboot, make sure that the packages stay. That they, that they that we still have them and we should it should it should uh, keep them but we're gonna test that we're gonna find out just make sure yeah, yes it did but so that's how you do it I can I could go back and I could do this with no drive 
And the only difference is you don't have any mechanism to store your configurations. So, you, but you can use LBU commit to update any changes that you make. So yeah, so you can still do that. Anyway, that's all I had for today. Hope you enjoyed this short video on how to do a different mode for Alpine Linux. I suppose I'll come back when 3.15 is released. There's a number of changes in there to talk about. But there, this is just a patch release of the January video. So if you want to know what's new there, go check out that video. And I'll have a link in the, uh, in the cards on the system here. So hope to see you all again real soon. And bye for now. Thank you.